How did we reach to the level in the in the Stone Age? How did we reach to have slavery? How did we transform in the Stone Age into the slavery? And you had actually people wandering around without in the Stone Age and somebody became a slave and somebody became a master. How did this happen? The one who was ready to lose his life at any point of time, but not to be a slave, became a master, which is the one who was taking risk. We should try to find a way how to go into all areas, even rural areas, because a lot of talent is wasted there. New ideas, the new innovation, the new progress always comes from the rural. They are the ones who make progress. So it's a challenge for us to actually go and find the innovative minds. Warmest welcome to World Humanitarian Drive's 11th episode of Inspiring Millions Show. This is the show where we feature brilliant minds from around the world to share with us their story, one story at a time. Today, our special guest is Datuk Amer Bukvic, Chief Executive Officer of Bosnia Bank International. We'll get to know his inspiring story in a short while. Thank you for joining us live or in replay. I'm Viva Andrada O'Flynn, your host and Global Media Relations of World Humanitarian Drive. World Humanitarian Drive, also known as WHD, is an international NGO with global operations in 12 countries, founded in Croydon, UK, by British Indian global peace activist, entrepreneur, writer, Dr. Abdul Basit Saeed. The primary vision of WHD is to promote peace, education, and trade harmony initiatives globally among everyone across the world, regardless of race, gender, religion, or nationality, living as one family. On this Inspiring Millions show, we encourage you to engage with us. Please help us spread inspiration by sharing this link. It's also World Voice Day today. Share your voice with us by putting your questions that you would like to ask our honorable guest, Datuk Amer Bukvic, the CEO of Bosnia Bank International, or comments that you have for us in the chat box. They will read them later on in the show. Let us also know where you are watching this. Wherever you are in the world, let us keep you company and brighten your day as we share peace, love, and goodwill. For today's episode, our virtual stage takes us to Bosnia and Herzegovina, nicknamed as heart-shaped land because of the country's light heart shape. Located at the Balkan Peninsula in Southeastern Europe, Bosnia is a scenic country with a rich culture. The COVID pandemic has brought about uncertainty around the world with businesses brought to a halt Companies closing down and job losses, money stresses and worries can affect mental health and well-being. With it being Money Smart Week here on Inspiring Million Show, our special guest will share his tips on how to make money work for you and be money smart. We are very much honored to have with us Datuk Amer Bukvic, the CEO of Bosnia Bank International the only Islamic bank in Southeast Europe. During his tenure as CEO, Bosnia Bank International has become the fastest growing bank in Bosnia and Herzegovina, positioning itself among the top performing banks on the market. In 2017, it was declared as the best managed bank in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Under Datuk Amer Bukvic's management, Bosnia Bank International assets increased eightfold. Datuk Amer was declared best banking CEO in Bosnia and Herzegovina in 2011, 2014, and 2016. He received Best Transformational Leader Award 2017 for Islamic Banking Industry by Cambridge IF Analytica. 
as well as numerous other awards in Bosnia and Herzegovina and worldwide. Amer Bukvic is included on the list of 50 most influential world leaders in the Islamic economy by Islamica 500 Business Guide for 2018. Let's all welcome Datuk Amer Bukvic. Thank you so much, Viva. It is a pleasure to be with you today. Dabar Doshli, welcome. Thank you for joining us here today. We are very Yes, we are very honored that you could join us today. Could you please give us a brief background about yourself and introduce to the world who is Datuk Amer Bukvic? What was the path that you took to get to where you are today? Uh, Viva, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, it is my pleasure to be with you today. Uh, I, uh, my name is, as you mentioned, Amir Bukvic. I was born in uh, Sarajevo in Bosnia in 1973. Um, as time is passing, I am less and less proud in talking about the age of my birth. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming old, uh, but nevertheless, I, I am proud with, uh, with my path so far. I have been born, as mentioned, in Sarajevo, and I am a child of uh, my both parents uh, were engineers working for a Bosnian a company, which was part of Yugoslavia at that time, and we lived in different parts of the world. As a child, I lived in uh, from 1976 to 1978 in Sudan, in Khartoum. Then we moved uh, into Baghdad in Iraq from 78 to 82. Then from 82, I came back to Sarajevo, to Bosnia, Yugoslavia. And then in 85 to 87, we moved again uh, to Libya, Tripoli. Uh, I was uh, as a child schooling in these years. And then from um, Libya, I moved back to Bosnia again. I did my high school in Sarajevo. In, um, one of the oldest high schools in, 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 in Sarajevo, Perva Gimnazia. Uh, I'm really proud of my high school because I went to the same high school like my father and the grandfather. Uh, so uh, we are, after that, I studied in Malaysia. Uh, I did my undergraduate in International Islamic University in, in Malaysia. Um, the title that you are uh, referring uh, me with, Dato, is the Malaysian title. I think not many people in Bosnia are aware of the meaning of Dato. Um, and uh, after Malaysia, I went to Japan. I, I did my master's in Japan, 96 to 98. Uh, again, after that, I came back to Bosnia. Then I moved to Saudi Arabia. I joined the Islamic Development Bank where I worked almost for five years. Then I came back, I joined the Islamic Banking uh, Institution, which is called BBI, it used to be deputy CEO. Now uh, from 2006, last 15 years, I am the CEO of an Islamic bank in Bosnia. That was my path. And uh, through this, I would say that, uh, that I took, uh, I just, because of the circumstances in which I lived, I just kept moving. And I believe that uh, the best uh, path for younger generations are to move. Because as the book of uh, Muhammad Assad, uh, Path to Mecca, uh, I read a very interesting uh, analogy. They said that the people are like water. The more water moves, the cleaner it is to drink. So I think it is a good, good thing that happened to me is that I always kept moving. I never stopped. And that was the specifics of my path. And being uh, from uh, Southeast Europe, I, I took a very interesting journey to uh, Far East, Middle East. I, I, I traveled to destinations that are not very common to uh, people in uh, Southeast Europe. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. So you traveled to many different places. And as you said, you keep on moving. And 
which led to interesting journeys for you. So, Dato Bukvich, what gives your life meaning? What is the best thing about being a CEO of Bosnia Bank International? Um, if I am, when I do advise uh, my son, who's 18 years old now, and, uh, the advice I give him is uh, that he should be working in the place where, for which he feels passion. I think that is the most important thing, that in your professional development, you have to make um, a mix between uh, between technical skills and the passion for which you live. Uh, being a CEO of um, first and only Islamic bank in Bosnia and in this part of the world, uh, especially in Central Yugoslavia, uh, is something that I have a very passionate feeling for. You know, I, I, I don't consider myself that working as a CEO of BBI is not actually working for me. It is my life. Uh, you, very common question which is asked on, um, on uh, interviews in recruitment when you want to recruit someone, you are, the, the question that uh, I came across was, do you, uh, uh, do you live to work or do you work to live? That is a very, uh, two different approaches to life. In my case, being a CEO of Bosna Bank International, I live to work. Uh, for me, everything else is, is the second place. My passion is uh, developing Islamic banking in Eastern Europe, uh, enhancing it, opening opportunities for the underprivileged to establish their own businesses, to start uh, small businesses, to enhance the SMEs, to expand the big companies and big businesses, to uh, to make a, a financial plan for all the individuals, to make their life easier and more uh, comprehensively uh, structured when it comes to finance. I, I live for that idea. That, that is something that uh, I don't consider that I work. For me, that is my life. And that is, uh, that is the passion for, in which I believe. And that, that, is the, that is the basis of your success. Uh, all of us know how to be fast, how to uh, be efficient, how to, how to fight in the market, but only um, uh, those among us who are ready uh, to, uh, to live that, that, you know, that path is uh, the ones who have passion about that path are the ones who are going to win. That's very inspirational. So how is your being a CEO affected by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic? What is the COVID situation there in Bosnia right now? Bosnia is a very uh, complex uh, structure, uh, which resulted after the, the conflict we had in the 90s. Um, uh, Bosnia was um, attacked by uh, neighboring countries which had uh, some uh, ambition in dividing it and then later it was uh, the peace was established in Dayton which is is a very um, strange kind of uh, peace treaty where where the world came and they said okay whoever was uh, was fighting now you should work together. And uh, we are expected to have a, a governmental structure, which is uh, to make it more, since you are based in UK, let me give you an example. Uh, it is something like uh, if the, the world or United Nations asked uh, uh, after World War II, if they asked uh, Churchill and uh, Hitler to make a joint government. So this is what we have today in Bosnia. We have uh, everybody sitting in the same table and then they have very much a, a difficulty to reach an agreement. 
so when it comes to pandemic effects uh, and um, the, the vaccines now, for example, the planning the vaccines, we have a lot of difficulties in this functionality of the decision-making process within our country, unfortunately. So um, that is that is the, the, the negative side to it. But the positive side is that we have a very inspirational people living in this country. Uh, a lot of, we, we have companies that started uh, developing and producing their own ventilators. We have, uh, uh, companies that went so fast and uh, that they they saw the crisis uh, as actually an opportunity and this is what we promoted from the day one uh, whenever crisis strike whenever something negative happens uh, the strongest among us are the ones who see these crises as an opportunity and they come out from the crisis much stronger and in the time after they are the ones who develop themselves into uh, market leaders or the winners. So uh, it is a challenging time in Bosnia, but nevertheless, uh, we see now at this point, we see the uh, light on the end of the tunnel. And this is the encouraging, uh, encouraging sign. That's great that there are also people who are, who go through um, ways to still cope with the pandemic and help others. So now let's talk about trade since you were also talking about peace earlier. So World Humanitarian Drive has a trade for peace initiative. In your opinion, how would trade bring peace and stability to international relations? Okay, um, that is a very interesting question. That is a very interesting question. And I think, um, Actually, what, what we um, believe in BBI is that uh, we went into that path uh, of promoting investment conference. We created the biggest investment conference in Southeast Europe called Sarajevo Business Forum. Uh, and we created the biggest exhibition uh, of halal exhibition in Southeast Europe called Sarajevo Halal uh, Fair. Uh, these two, uh, two events we have been organizing for a number of years. Sarajevo Business Forum we have been organizing for more than 10 years. Each year bringing all the business people and the leaders from the region to talk about trade and investment in order to overcome uh, the political uh, misunderstandings or uh, not being on the same track. The biggest challenge what we see is that we have to uh, trade and business and investments uh, should uh, actually channel people to look at each other as an interest, not as a threat. And once you start seeing your neighbor and the neighboring country as a source of uh, potential interest that you can develop business together, that you can develop trade together, your mindset is moving from animosity into friendship and uh, cooperation. That, that is why I believe uh, that you are absolutely right. Um, uh, I, 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 really, I really admire your question. Your question is, is really very, very inspirational, actually. Actually, it is business investment and trade that uh, should inspire uh, the actors on the international relations or international affairs stage to cooperate and not uh, confront each other, that this is the path of seeing each other as an opportunity. Look at us. We are in Southeast Europe. We are a country composed uh, of three uh, different ethnic groups of three uh, or four large religions uh, are present in Bosnia, which have been coexisting for centuries together. Uh, you have a, a majority or around 50 or slightly above 50 percent are the Muslims. Um, you have uh, around 30 plus uh, Orthodox Christians and you have uh, about uh, 15 uh, percent are Catholics and you have also a, a small number of Jewish uh, denominated uh, 
portion of our population. So we have a potential to use each other. The Muslims can become the bridge with the Muslim world, which counts like 1.5, 1.6 billion people around the world. The Catholics should work together with us and be the bridge to the Catholic world. And the Orthodox Christians should be the bridge to the Orthodox Christian world. And all of us together with the Jews of Bosnia should work in the same direction and should see each other as opportunity and not as a threat to each other. We should, our goal should be to create new factories, to create new production, to create new services, instead of creating new conflict zones. So the, the question is really, really smart. And I think that we have been thinking in the same line. So we, were, we are organizing investment conferences, we are organizing fairs in order to, to, to to bring the attention of all of us that we actually can do much better if we cooperate. Yeah, that's what the world needs now. Also more cooperation from different religions and gender and race. So let's talk about bank depositors now. So what do you see are the challenges that bank depositors face these days and how do you guide them as a CEO of Bosna Bank International? When you say bank depositors, I would uh, assume that you're referring to the clients of the bank yes. uh, overall. I think uh, the, the clients or the individuals um, or companies, of course, we are going through a challenging uh, uncertain times which are full of uncertainties. Um, but nevertheless, again, um, all the crises will, will come and pass and there will be new times and for the new times, uh, the stronger ones and the long, uh, or, 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 and the ones who were able to see, uh, on the long-term vision will be the ones who will succeed. I think at this moment, uh, governments around the world are doing a lot of subsidies and they are doing a lot of spending and I think they are they were uh, in need uh, in, in, in putting into the system uh, more money and money has been probably printed uh, to a larger extent than they were in the past so we are facing uh, a danger of inflation once things are uh, as settled. So uh, I think that the citizens or companies should be very careful to have diversified uh, their, uh, uh, their, their property, their, whatever they have. Uh, they should have diversification while investing. A certain part of their investment should be in cash. They should keep it in cash. Cert certain part they should also uh, allocate into investments into stocks and the stock market. Certain in, in, should, should look into investing in the real estate. I think diversification is the most secure approach to all uh, clients of the bank and citizens and of course they, they will have a challenging times we, we do not know how long they should they should have some cash they should keep cash whoever has uh, but they should not uh, they should also look at investments the life must go on and uh, at one point of time things might become um, might become more expensive after, after all this cash is being uh, pumped in into different countries and markets. Yeah, so you've shared a lot of tips already about the diversification, investment of one's real estate. How about those, uh, our viewers staying at home, what tips would you like to share about being money smart in these times and how to make money work for them? What would you like to share with them? Um, I think at this point of time, uh, a lot of us are uh, staying at home. Uh, a lot of us maybe do not have that kind of pressure of work that they used to have in the past. I would strongly advise them to uh, the basic wealth that every individual has, not on his bank account, 
not in the real estate market or in the stock market is what he has in his head. Uh, so uh, I think this time should be, uh, we should spend a lot of time, a lot on training, reading, listening. Uh, and uh, whatever free time we have, we should try to, to focus it on developing new skills that will be helpful for us after the normalization. Uh, when it comes to economy, I think we are going to, uh, this crisis is going to, has moved us on online. And I think the effect of moving online will be uh, quite influential. I think the digital economy is going to en enhance in the future its uh, channels. And I think we should actually be ready for the for that future as individuals. So those are a lot of useful tips. There's even training, developing new skills. So how do you measure success then? How do I measure success? Yes. For me, success has different dimensions. Success, uh, I believe, um, first of all, I, 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 I should say that I believe that I am a religious person. Um, trying to be a religious person and I, I um, I think that success does not come in a just a form of this life. I think that success has a transcendental meaning. Uh, success in this life and the hereafter should always be balanced. I think that is one perspective. If we talk about success in this life, I again uh, believe it has uh, several perspectives and dimensions. There is a professional career success. There is a success in the family there is a success in, 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 uh, in your uh, extended uh, neighborhood and, and the surrounding. So when it comes to professional, I believe that success is to match the professional and passion. You should work on the same lines where your passion lies and that will bring you into a higher level that will make you a winner. That would make you a successful professional, uh, be it an entrepreneur or a bureaucrat or, uh, or a sportsman, or whatever it is. But you, you should be doing something which you are passionate about. When it comes to family success, I think um, we should always look at sustainability of our success. Our success should move on the following generation. You should, uh, you are not a successful man in my eyes if your children are also not of, on the path to success. And then again, as I said, uh, success is transcendental for me. You know, and th this is not only about this life; it is about uh, the hereafter as well. So, and the third dimension is. Um, uh, not only your family uh, sustainability, but your immediate surroundings. You, you, you cannot be successful if your neighborhood is not. If everybody in your neighborhood, uh, you cannot be a rich man if your neighborhood does not have food to eat. So you, you must, for me, a successful man is someone who brings up with him in a sustainable manner not only himself, but also his family, his future generation, his surroundings, his extended family, his neighborhood, that everybody rises up and not only rise up on this life, that you rise up in a transcendental uh, manner. That means you should always balance between this life and the hereafter. So that, that is, I don't know, am I being too philosophical, but that is how I see, uh, how I see success. Your question, was, your question was philosophical. It required me to go into. Uh, <laughs> it's a great definition of success. And we also have a question for from a viewer. When wonderful. Her question is, this is related to what you were saying. Since you were also the CEO of Bosna Bank International, what are the important attributes of a successful leader today? What should leaders have? What qualities? 
Um, I would say that uh, it is not easy to, to, to see and identify a leader. A leader, in my mind, is someone who leads leaders. A leader is not someone who leads followers. So if you actually identify to uh, how would I see between two people, how would I say who has more of leadership skills? The easiest way is just to evaluate his surroundings. If he is surrounded by followers, he's not a very high quality leader. If he is surrounded by other leaders, he is a leader. Uh, the challenge is to who do you lead? The challenge is to lead the leaders. These are the greatest leaders in my mind. So when I look at the, let's say, be it a business leader, a political leader, a society leader, I would just look at his surrounding. If people around him are able to gather and to lead, gather people around themselves, not only follow him, that means that, that whoever is able and capable to gather these categories of people who can lead others and lead them, then that is the great leader in my mind. That is how I would uh, give a characteristic for a leader. So what you're saying is that- Ability to lead leaders. Ability to lead leaders is what I respect among the greatest leaders. And we have a lot of people who are leading, but they are leading followers. Uh, it's very easy to see the difference between a leader and a follower, but it is not easy to see a difference between two leaders. And how you can do that is uh, you just see, is he leading followers or if he's leading leaders? The great leaders are the ones who are leading leaders. And for that, you, it's very easy. Uh, for example, if my surrounding, if my uh, executive directors, if they are leaders, if people are around them, then I am a good leader. But if I have people who are just around me and follow only what I say and what I think and just echo my thinking, then I am a very weak leader. Okay, so leaders who lead leaders are the best leaders there are because they also inspire others to become leaders themselves and by the way it is not easy to lead leaders you are being challenged continuously because leaders around you are asking difficult questions leaders around you are always the ones who are asking why left why not right i think this i think that but if you are capable to lead that kind of people who are independent and who themselves are leaders then you are a leader Thank you so much for that great definition of leader. So Bosnia Bank International is the only Islamic bank in Southeast Europe. So how are you celebrating Ramadan this year? Uh, I'll just correct you. We, we have another uh, smaller bank in size in Albania called United Bank of Albania. Uh, I am also, I am a chairman actually of the board of that bank. That is also an Islamic bank. Uh, they have their own market in Albania. Um, and we are not the only one. There is one more in Albania, but in former Yugoslavia, in this part of the world, we are the only one. How do we celebrate Ramadan? Actually, uh, usually we have iftar, we organize iftar with staff, uh, we organize iftars with clients. But this year, because of the pandemic, uh, we decided to organize iftar for all the uh, hospital workers, so people who work with COVID patients. So we are sending them the first week of Ramadan, we are sending to, to hospitals uh, iftars for all the nurses, doctors, technicians, all those who are actually uh, working with COVID clients. I myself was a very uh, serious COVID client few months back, I was in I was hospitalized, and I can tell you that the, all the staff, the medical staff, the doctors, despite 
the risk risking their own lives and many of them have died in risking their own lives they are fighting for all of us and so this ramadan we wanted to pay tribute to all the hospital staff actually who are taking this courageous uh, courageous uh, approach in healing all of us that's it Yes. That, that is that we are proud of that part of this Ramadan. Ramadan in Bosnia is magnificent. Uh, I'm talking now, I'm referring to things before the COVID. Things are full until late at night. Uh, families are visiting each other. Uh, it's like Bosnia in Ramadan becomes uh, such an interesting. Like Disneyland. Yeah, but because of COVID times, the celebration changed, and then now you're celebrating with also people, frontliners, those who work in hospitals. Yeah. So we have viewers from Philippines, Malaysia, from different parts of the world. So many of our viewers have not been to Bosnia yet. So this would be a great opportunity for them to know more about your country. So can you please share with us what do you love most about Bosnia? Uh, Bosnia is a very um, magical place, I would say. It is a place of all these big uh, civilizations, cultures and religions that have been coexisting for centuries. And um, it developed uh, some something magical about itself. I think in former Yugoslavia and Yugoslavia in all Eastern Europe was the center of, I would say, of culture, of music, of arts, of uh, all um, education, technology. In Eastern and cent Central and Eastern Europe, we were the center of, 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 of uh, I would say, success in artistic, in um, economic, in, in many, many dimensions. And the center of that Yugoslavia is Bosnia. And the reason for that is this uh, coexistence of different cultures and civilizations. We, from early childhood, we adjust ourselves on living together with Catholics, with the Christians, with Jews. But nobody here is an immigrant. Or every, all of us are out, uh, the local people who originate from here for centuries. Uh, the, you have also something like this in New York, in London, coexistence of different cultures, civilizations, races. But most of it is people coming from different parts of the world and establishing themselves in that environment. We have been living here for centuries together. Uh, we have been living uh, for hundreds and hundreds of years and we have been living peacefully with each other and that that coexistence created energy which different kinds of energies created synergy of this energy into something magnificent bosnia is really a best uh, the best part of bosnia is bosnian people who are really adorable and very, very uh, impressive. I, 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 I traveled more than 70 countries around the world. And I always say, if you go and you stop a taxi in any of the country, only in Bosnia, whenever I stop a taxi, the chances that the taxi driver is more educated and smarter than me are 50%. Only in Bosnia, nowhere else. I, I feel myself that because of my experience, my exposure, I have a lot of different knowledge, different experience. I feel myself dominant when I sit with a taxi driver everywhere except in Bosnia. Bosnia is something very amazing. Chances that the taxi driver is smarter than me, is more educated than me, in Bosnia is 50-50, always. So we have really very impressive people. We have very talented people. Uh, in sports, in music, in, in arts, 
And the country here is also amazing. You know, this we have uh, two climates. You know, in Sarajevo, uh, you go through a tunnel. Sarajevo has a continental climate. And continental climate, you have uh, fruits like plums, like uh, strawberries. And then you go to a tunnel, you go out of the tunnel, and you have Mediterranean climate with different kind of uh, fruits like uh, uh, like kiwi, uh, lemons. I mean, this is only possible in Bosnia. We are talking uh, about uh, uh, 20 minutes drive that you, 30 minutes drive that you can change the climate completely. This is possible in Bosnia. Then you have all the beautiful sea. You have so much beautiful rivers. We are the fourth uh, um, uh, in whole Europe. We are ranked as the fourth with uh, water reserves. I mean, you have so many uh, rivers and lakes at all sides. You, in Bosnia, you can go skiing and you can go swimming and uh, you can uh, all in a very, very uh, small distance. Uh, I think uh, you have places more beautiful than Bosnia, but only in one dimension. If you go to California, maybe they have better beaches than we have in Bosnia. But then they, in California, they don't have skiing and they don't have uh, interesting mountains like we have here. They don't have interesting rivers that we have here. You can go somewhere again uh, where you have mountains, but you don't have the sea and the Mediterranean climate there is nowhere that you have this mix like you have in Bosnia and Sarajevo. And Sarajevo, as I mentioned, you know, that Sarajevo and Ramadan become something magical. And I use the word Disneyland. I would say when you come to Bosnia, you feel like you enter Disneyland with so many rides, interesting different rides of different things to do. That is why we have a lot of people who are just, whoever comes once here, they keep coming again and again and again. So we have enormous rise before COVID of tourism, while we did not invest a single cent in promotion of our country. But the numbers are amazing. We have every year around 25% increase in the number of tourists coming. And what is amazing is that those who come once, they keep coming and bringing their, and they bring their friends. It is the word of mouth that is the biggest in marketing infrastructure for our tourism. Thank you so much for sharing what you love about your country and seeing from the comments, our viewers would love to visit your country. So we have another question from a viewer. So do you think that companies should rethink of continuing remote work as a long-term practice and not only as a pandemic solution? It's a question by Tongi Gra. Actually, I, I don't think that we are ever going to go back to the level of uh, where we used to be in, in the past. I think that we, will, we are going to work online much more than we used to work in the past, even when the pandemic is over. I think this is the new reality of the new world, that we will have more and more uh, shift to the online, which is good. Uh, it is a new dimension. You can work and still be close to your family. You, you, there is a lot of efficiency there. Uh, you, you, there is a lot of efficiency not needing to travel to the workplace and travel back. I used to live in Japan and I know I have friends who would travel each morning in Tokyo. They would take uh, two hours to reach their uh, workplace and then two hours to reach their home back. I think this new um, online trends are def going to help when it comes to efficiency and also uh, having a more quality life with your family, not spending time in travel back and forth. But again, uh, things will get to normal, uh, not to the same level like before, but still there is a need of interaction. Human beings are social uh, and they, uh, their complete uh, fulfilling of their potential are only when they do interact with each other. But not all jobs, not everyone 
is required at all times to be in office all the time. So I think we are going to have, uh, we are going to have some differences in time, in times ahead of us. Yeah, the COVID situation has changed the way people work. And so for our final question, that the Amer Bukvich, what is your inspiring message to the world? My inspiring message to the world, um, I think life is changing. The perspectives each single day is changing. In times of pandemic, in challenging times in which we live today, the most important thing is that we remain optimistic and uh, that we, uh, the, the ones who are stronger among us, they need to motivate others. We have to have a sustainable, optimistic approach to life. Crises were there, things come and go. Uh, in the past, we have so many different crises of the pandemics, wars, crises. And at that particular time, everything looks very bleak. But only leaders among you are the ones who can see uh, better times and who can see the light on the end of the tunnel. And their role should be to enlighten your environment, they, that you should bring optimism around you. We should not fall with, with all the different uh, crises uh, because the worst thing of crisis is pessimism. Uh, and we should not allow pessimism to spread. We should be optimistic for tomorrow. We should know that uh, history had so many similar situations and the human humanity always went out and they always won and they always went to a new stage. Um, ch challenges are there to be overcome. Uh, for, for us to overcome them. And uh, the leader among, leaders among us are the ones who can show the way and show the light in the end of the tunnel. Valati, thank you so much, Dr. Amer Bukvich, for honoring us with your presence and sharing your inspiring story, words of wisdom and money tips with the world. In honor of international recognition for your virtue and persistently serving and inspiring humanity with your noble deeds, World Humanitarian Drive would like to award you with an inspiring humanitarian award. Dato Amer Bukvich. Thank you signed. so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'm honored. I'm honored and uh, I, I have in, enjoyed being uh, with uh, with your foundation and thank you for very uh, intelligent and smart questions that you you asked thank you so much it was signed on the 16th of april so signed by dr abdul basit saeed whd founder and chairman so thank you dr amer bukvich for all your humanitarian works and here's to many more Congratulations and thank you for joining us here today. Datok Amer Bukvich, Chief Executive Officer of Bosnia Bank International. Thank you so much. Thank you, Valati. We would like to share a quotation by a former First Lady of the United States, Michelle Obama. Success isn't about how much money you make it's about the difference you make in people's lives. While money is important, there is more to life than money. Let us also keep in mind to value people and our planet before profit. This has been World Humanitarian Drive's Inspiring Millions show. If today's discussion inspired you, please share the link with your family and friends. Share with us your takeaways from today. Follow us in our social media accounts. Click subscribe on our YouTube channel, WHD Media. Visit our WHD website, www.whd.org.uk for more inspiring events. Stay safe and healthy, everyone, to our frontliners. 
we salute you. We thank you for your hard work, sacrifices, and dedication to humanity. On behalf of WHD team, especially those working behind the scenes, WHD Chairman Dr. Abdul Basit Saeed, WHD Director of Global Operations, Ms. Sarah Wilson, WHD's 12th Honorable Secretary Generals, we thank you, our virtual audience from around the world for joining us. We wish our Muslim family and friends Ramadan Mubarak. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. I'm Viva Andrada O'Flynn. Please join us again next Friday. We will have a discussion with Mr. Robin Marsh, Secretary General of Universal Peace Federation UK, as we inspire the world here on Inspiring Millions Show.